So 3 let's see how to make your own relay. You need a replacement for a reader relay for my vintage multimeter and of course I could buy it but let's try to make my own. I have these reed contacts. I will put one into a plastic tube from a broken pan and I need some plastic rings and I will basically wire the coil between them using some scrap wire from some scrap coils, transformers, electromagnets, motors. I have to choose some suitable plastic rings on it. I of course don't trash anything, I'm a hoarder, so when I disassemble something I keep the bits from it so I can reuse them and it very often pays off. Let's put some plastic rings on the tube and make the coil and let's try to calculate it of course. Doing some modifications to the plastic bits using the best lathe I have. Removing possible remains of grease. Nice. Now of course the simulation of the solenoid and finding the right diameter of a wire. Unfortunately this calculation is only in the old calculator, not yet in the new calculator or catculator, but I plan to add it. The supply voltage is 5 volts, the current density in the wire is 2.1 amps per square millimeter, so it's not going to get too hot. The inner diameter of the coil or solenoid is going to be 4 millimeters, 12 millimeters outer diameter, 24 millimeters length, the fill factor about 0.666, which might be still a bit optimistic for a wildly wound coil. And it seems the right number of turns is about 5600, and the wire diameter comes out as 0.12 millimeters. I'm going to use 140 meters of a wire, and the DC resistance of the wire is going to be 208.7 ohms, and the coil is going to draw about 24 milliamps. And of course relay coils are not critical, I'm not going to count the turns, I will just keep winding until the outer diameter of the coil is 12 millimeters. Cleaning the wire using scissors of course. And the termination, this is the trickiest, and of course just an absolute idiot would just leave this super thin wire hanging from it, it would break. The wire goes under the plastic bit, covering the sharp end of it somehow. Gluing the bits in a place. Here is the dog. And now the whole magic is just putting this tube on a metal rod in this drill. It has a little bit of friction but it can actually spin on it. Limiting the torque and preventing the wire from breaking, hopefully. And this is on a pen and it should unwind freely. Of course I would need three hands ideally here, but... It looks nice so far. Of course I'm using a drill, not doing it by hand because I'm aiming at about 5000 bloody turns. It actually looks quite nice so far, but I don't want to say this because right after this it's going to break. Of course I broke it so I just cleaned it both ends with scissors, I touched it with a soldering iron with some solder and rosin. Let's fold a tiny bit of a sticky tape around it and that's it. You could just edit it out but I'm not going to cheat. If you break a wire you can always fix it, you don't have to redo the entire thing. And it continues. Let's call it finished. Let's secure it with some tape so it doesn't unwind wildly. Terminating this end of it. Checking the resistance of it. I was aiming at 210 ohms. 
it ended up 280, but higher resistance doesn't matter. A lower resistance would be worse because it could overload the circuit driving the coil. Putting some tape over it. Of course the coil resistance is higher because I kept winding until the outer diameter of the coil was about 13.7 millimeters. And the simulation seems to actually be very close. And it's going to draw less current, about 18 milliamps. But because there is more turns, about 6800, the flux density should be close to what I intended. Because it goes up with the current, but also with the number of turns. I soldered the wires to the reed and the reed goes in. Of course nicely centered. And let's test it using my DIY bench power supply, the smaller one. It turns on at about 2.6 volts. And off at about 1.4 volts. Of course relays typically have a hysteresis and they typically should turn on at about 70% of their nominal voltage or less. Which seems to be right here. The relay is nicely sensitive. I quickly tested it in the multimeter and it was working, so let's give it better wires because the wires are going to be the only mechanical support of it. And putting a thick heat shrink over it. And that's the relay which will go into my multimeter. Of course it looks ugly, but it works. So that's it and of course I know you can buy it for about two dollars, but it doesn't teach you anything. And of course if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me. Without you this channel wouldn't be possible.